That is why in all our needs, we have to learn to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know at the moment also, we are going to great difficulty. We have this poverty there, we have people sick there, we have people with financial difficulties. Everyone tries to solve whatever his needs are according to the means he sees around him. But there's no doubt the main means is Allah Ta'ala Himself. When Allah Ta'ala will fulfill our means, then Allah Ta'ala will create circumstances for the head to fulfill our needs. And we saw that now in this last few days, we know that Afghanistan, which was invaded 20 years ago, and it was invaded by one of the most powerful armies of the world, from the artillery point of view, not from a fighting point of view. Because one moment is better than a thousand rare moments as far as fair fight is concerned. But what Allah has given him, given them, as far as technology is concerned, as far as planes are concerned, as far as the machinery is concerned, as far as art is concerned, far more advanced than any country in the world. And people who were there against, who are fighting, who are fighting them. They were less in number two. They did not even have shoes also. Many of them barefooted. No meal also. The guns they had, those guns also, half had their operating properly, all old guns. Most of them were man-made guns. Or some they had taken from the Russians and others that they had taken from the Americans themselves. And how has Tatala brought this so-called superpower to his needs? And with humiliation, they had to leave and run away from this particular place. Who has done that? It's not the Taliban, my dear brothers. The Taliban who are mean, the condition for Allah has been fulfilled. This happened from Allah Ta'ala's time. That the shock that has come up to now, the powers of the world are wondering what has happened. They do not even have to understand what has taken place. And even the Taliban don't know how it took place. Definitely it was done by the power and the fear of Allah Ta'ala. We always hear Allah Ta'ala does with the means to, Allah does without the means to, Allah Ta'ala does against the means to. This was a clear indication where Allah Ta'ala has done completely against the means. From the Asbah point of view, there was no light that very soon this people will leave our place. Because there's everything for them, everything provided. Certainly they made themselves so within this Afghanistan. <laughs> but when Allah's decree comes, then all the technology, everything lays on side. But for help of Allah to come, we have to come to deen. Allah says, Wa aibdunam mastatatun min tuwa wa aibdunam mastatatun What in our means we have to prepare, but we have to turn our attention to Allah Ta'ala. If our attention is upon Allah Ta'ala and we could take the correct means that Allah Ta'ala has shown us in the 20th century that all the technology that people have got so much iman upon that when Tatar tells when you get sick, don't come to the masjid, you don't come to the masjid. Tatar tells don't go to the masjid, your father gets sick, you're going to get the sickness. And Allah forbid. Then we gain preference to that technology over what Allah and Allah Sassul have told us. Whereas withering the sick person, ordinary sick person, there is such a great reward. It comes in the hands of a person sick, you wither that person at night. Till the morning, 70,000 malaya come and do our mafter for you. If you go in the morning, till the evening, 70,000 malaya come and do our mafter for you. If some buzruk is around, we go to the buzruk, please make dua for me. Here the malaya, the creation of Allah, the sinners are making this dua is the far for you. It comes in the hadith that person who goes and sickness is in the garden of paradise. It comes in the hadith, you was a sick person, your duas get accepted too. And that person who you're making dua before, whatever sawab he's getting, because of sickness, you get the same sawab too. And come in the hadith, a Muslim has got a right over Muslim. Somebody is sick, he's happy for you with him. They're not doing a favor to you. <coughs> it is his imani right of his with that particular person. But if technology tells us, now we will learn that you're going to get sick, you can't go there, then we forget this great word of Rasulullah. 
Eğer Nebi Aleyhisselam'a çoğun alsa da vefsi yapalım. Canlı Nebi Aleyhisselam'ın siyeri bunu indirdi gördü. Yüzüncüsü dua, Elhamdülillah de afvani min mabdullah kebi. Ve faddala min akafiri min halaka da zila. Soğuk dua. Make sugar ya Allah, you have saved me from his difficulty. Whether it be sickness, whether it be financial difficulty, whatever difficulty that person is. In fact, when we walk, go to Johannesburg, and you see that place where people go for evil, <coughs> there we must eat this word, Alhamdulillah, they are fine, we must allow him be. That they Allah, don't take us near this particular place. You have kept me away. So in all of them, this one is so general that any sort of difficulty, Dini difficulty, dunya difficulty, physical difficulty, mental difficulty, whatever you see a person is. And there too, the ulama reminds us, when you go to a person in difficulty and you read this dua, read it softly. Don't let him hear the dua so he may not feel hurt. Because our job is not to hurt him. But the antidote has been shown to us that inshallah, that person, whatever is sickness, that sickness will not come to you. In that person with financial difficulty, Allah will not send that difficulty upon you. That is in the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And our iman upon hadith, that is most important, that is iman. Iman upon hadith is that whatever our beloved Nabi said, the whole world and all the technology can go one side. Allah's Nabi, what he said, that is true, 100% true. And that yaqeen must come from the heart. The common example, you know, that Nabi Islam said that sadqa increases a person wealth and interest is concerned, it decreases a person wealth. But what we see out of the where a person gives sadqa, he had 100, now he's only got 90. And the interest is see, he had 100, and another year he's got 120. It seems as though that is increasing. But our yakin what Allah's Nabi said is true. If I will give sadqa, Allah Ta'ala will create the means. If either Allah will increase, there are so many incidents in history. We are Kabirin, they knew that if you gave, you get ten times. If they gave Sadka, if somebody came with money less than ten times, they said this is for somebody else. Mine is ten times more than what I did. But the ulama also right. One is you see the barakat in your money. When you got 90, but from that 90, Allah will make you do such works and such barakat will come out. That another person, a thousand, but that much barakat does not come out. Yeah. Barakat cannot be explained. That's from Allah Ta'ala's time. What is barakat? Hazrat Abu Huraira says, eh, once there I came, there was no food. Nabi Hazrat gave me a small letter there. Some khajur was in there. From that khajur, I ate in a time of Rasulullah, I made people eat. In a time of Siddiq Akbar, I ate, I made people eat. In one battle later on, an arrow came, got that what he called khajur, that what he called bag, and it broke open and that, then it got finished. Mm-hmm. Nabi al Islam was on one occasion when he was in his house. And Nabi al told that person, Nabi al used to like the leg of an animal, give me, I think it's zira, give me the leg. He gave me one leg. He said, give me another leg, give me another leg. He said, give me another leg. The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, person, anyone who has two legs, Rasulullah Sallam said, if you have closed your eyes, and done what I said, then as long as I ask, Allah Ta'ala would have put a leg in a leg would have come out. <laughs> that is Iman, my dear brothers, and that is Barakat, my dear brothers. There's so many instances in Hadith that Barakat and increase will come from Allah Ta'ala's side, sources that man cannot even imagine. It comes upon a way of Zukum in Hisulai Hasid. When a person has taqwa, when a person fulfills the command of Allah Ta'ala, when a person fixes his connection with Allah Ta'ala, then one of the things Allah will give him that such source that a person could not even imagine of, Allah will give that person that source. Allah will give him sukoon and itminan. Now the person that has money on one side, he's got no peace, no sukoon, no itminan. What is the benefit of it? Can even eat? It's not in his takdeer to eat. The cook in his house will eat, it is his takdeer to eat. When Allah wishes, Allah will do that to my children. But we have to fix our connection with Allah Ta'ala. And Allah has given us great dua of dua. In any condition, in any hana, dua is remarkable. And the ulama says the effect of dua is what it is. When a person has a yaqeen in his heart, 
that Allah will do my work. The anamat and sign is thus that when any calamity before the person, before he goes to the makhluk, he goes to the khalif. Before he goes to the creation, he goes and spends musalla, this surat of namaz, makes dua to Allah Ta'ala. And then after asking Allah Ta'ala, he asks Allah Ta'ala, you create the means for me. Then from ghaib Allah Ta'ala created the means for that particular person. And his work is done. And the acceptance of dua is this. In one hadith, the Bible says, La yudhu qaza in the dua. The deal cannot change. But dua can reroute the tadbir. What is the meaning of the There are various meanings. One meaning is this, that the tadbir on a normal circle cannot stay, but except yours Allah, Allah Ta'ala can change the tadbir. Another meaning is this, that the tadbir will change, what, what your dua will change the deed, the meaning is this, it can be a very great difficulty that come upon us. But when a person will make dua and turn to Allah Ta'ala, then the difficulty, it can be like a mountain, it will be as if nothing has happened to you. Allah will give you the sabr. Allah will make it easy for you. And there are so many instances of nature. Take this whole Taliban, what sort of difficulty did not come upon them? Bombs all four sides. People were born in this particular bombs, right, left, and right, and they grew up in bombs. Everything, my dear brothers, what made it easy for them? The connection with Allah Ta'ala. Some people went some time ago, that then the Russians were there. And then the fighters came dropping the bombs. Of course, whoever was there, the other people, all the Muhammad, they were very frightened. Never see the planes, never saw bombs. Young Afghani child says, Morana, why are you frightened? Whatever Allah wish will happen. Most of you can die, nothing more than that. When people have death, they have seen upon Allah Ta'ala that bombs going one side. And that the deal is thus, if Allah wishes it will harm me, if Allah does not wish it will not harm me. Whenever the harm from Allah Ta'ala's sight, then my dear, there is no power in the world in any way can combat those people. And that is what the dunya has tried on, take people away from deen. And taking away from people from deen, one thing they have done, my dear, is the internet that is there. The TV is now TV thing of the past. So much evil has come, that is why Nabi Ali says, Wala taqrabul fawahish. Ma zaram no matan. Don't go to any sort of iniquity, any sort of what it was. Be hayai. Whatever sort of it is, don't come near it to. Don't even see for one second you want to see it. Like a fitna also, Nabi says, don't go to a place where it's fitna. You go and see, you will get encamped in the fitna. And in the time of the judge, that's what happened. You will get entangled in the time of God for the fitna and death. So all this fawaiyans, all this bihayah that is there that is thrown to throughout the world. Imagine the doors throughout the world are open for all the actors who openly invite towards all the evil. And for deen, all the doors of the world, all the countries have closed the doors. So this is a clear sign, my dear brothers, that the preparation is taking place for the great fitna, the fitna of the jar, which every Nabi had gone for. And for us, it's very, very easy. We got the hadith of Rasulullah Sassam. And we have to follow the hadith, Allah Ta'ala will protect us, Allah will protect us. But if we are going to bring iman upon the things we see, upon what science tells us, upon what the media tells us, upon the technology, technology tells us we need namaz, so they go together, they're going to get the disease. If we will bring iman on that, now iman is born, my dear brothers. Because our Nabi said we've got to read namaz, soul to soul. We have to fulfill the word of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If Allah has meant Allah is sick, I will get sick. That is in Allah's hands. Sickness and good health is entirely in His hands. The biggest doctor in the world, heart surgeon or whatever it is, if he gets a heart attack, Allah is meant to come to Himself. There were, in the olden days when we were small, now we got many heart doctors. There was one doctor, Dr. Badok. He was a very, very famous so called heart doctor. He died of a heart attack at a very young age. Allah just shows that the shifa that people used to flock to him. What a pop was his name I think. People flock to him. He's not in his hands, he's a doctor. His own life is not in his hands. His own shifa is in his hands. How can he give you shifa? Yes, there's different methods. There's a method. Allah has made the dunya means and cause. You adopt the means. But the effect that things will come from Allah's side. That is why an honest doctor will tell you. I've done what I could do, now it's in the Allah's hands, it's from upstairs, but Allah wish will happen. 
everything is in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what we have to learn, and that is what we have to connect. That the time of the judge, people are bringing your team on the things we see on signs, and they will forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is my dear brothers, when the Iman will start giving us, we have to be very, very careful. Yes, will come. Allah says, well, that one of them. Verily, 100% different ways you will be tested because the world is a test. Our life is a test. We have been sent in a test. This is not because of our Darul Isa. This is Darul Imtihan. So, halat and conditions will come to see how my banda reacts in that video. There's an exam paper. You don't give the exam paper beforehand. That person is going to work for his examination. In the same way, this is a test. This is not Darul Isa. The first thing we make is just that we feel that now we have sukoon, we have money. We have what you call the comfort of the world and I'm successful. That is not success. Our success depends on the cover. Our success depends on the year after. And the year after is not one year, not two years, millions and trillions and trillions of years. How foolish we are for a short space of this world, we, when the person dies, in fact, we in the rich 60, 70, we fell, we just stay for one day. And everybody will feel the day. Then today, one day, will be late, not even one second in this world. For that one second in this world, we sacrifice the everlasting, what you call, comforts and benefits of the akhirat. And the akhirat benefit, Allah says Himself, Nabi Azam says, that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and has not even crossed men with the benefits of the akhirat. The name of the akhirat and azab also the same way. We cannot visualize in this world what the akhirat is like. Because our language only explains to us the things we see in this particular world. So that is the Iman we have to build and to stay away from fitna of Dajjal and Dajjal fitnas. And the first stage of Dajjal fitna is this that they create doubts in the minds of people to come to, to Sharia, to fulfill the Sharia of Nabi Islam. That this will do this to you, this will do this to you. The fear of things around and not the fear of Allah and not the fear of Buna. We have to bring to our life fear of Allah and fear of Buna. Then we have to bring our minds. So that is the first thing that will happen. That is why one, one of our friends, very last night, said a very beautiful thing. That there was one person, he was 100% on this. Then you come to the masjid too, in that lockdown too. After lockdown, then you must get away, when one other was, you will get sick. And he was very, very firm on this. After some time, his mother saw that going to the masjid, and he's telling, but he was shoulder to shoulder, and now all his now sakhti is gone, all his fearsome is gone. So asking that why somebody speak to you, somebody explain to you. You always used to tell you, you always to listen. He said, No, nobody told me anything. But I was somewhere, and maybe one of the Ali was speaking when the Dajjal fitna will start, only what will protect you is ten the ten ayats of Surah Kaf every day of the week. Some of them say the first ten ayat in the last ten ayat. Some people read the first ten ayat. Anyway, whatever it is, read the first ten ayat, last ten ayat, one ruku of the beginning, one ruku in the end, it takes more than not two, three minutes. I started reading that. When I started reading that, that automatically all this disappeared from my heart. That is the effect of the Quran, that is the effect of Hadith. So in this fitna time that we are going to now, what we should turn to, like Nabi al Islam commanded us at the time of fitna of the Jah, the Surah Kahf, will be a fortress for a person. And daily, this fortress will be called the first ten ayats and last ten ayats in particular. Muhammad was the praying, with the yaqeen they should read it. Not just read it, with the yaqeen, Ya Allah, this becomes in a hadith, that in the previous kitab also, nothing was revealed that the Muhammad was the praying, pull out of pull up and pull out of it now, for all sorts of protection. Whether it be, Witchcraft, which will become common in the time of the Jal, one of the fitnas that will take will be witchcraft. Witchcraft will be very, very common. In the beginning, in Surah Baqarah, Allah mentioned the Jews too. And some of them feel also that Shaitan will be a very big Jalugar. And that Jalugar, it will be the effect of the Jalugar that he will make what is good look bad and bad look good. His Jannah will be Jannah, his Jannah will be Jannah. And for that, he will use Jalugar. And protection for Jalugar, Allah has given us. The Muhammad saying, that is why some of us write that this is one of the great fitnas of the of the Akhir Zaman. That is why Allah Ta'ala has kept these two surahs back in the end. Kulabu Kulabu Binazak in the end. One of the reasons is that this is a big fitna 
and the perfection of Rasulullah is Muhammad Sain. The perfection of Rasulullah is Ayatul Kursi. The perfection of Rasulullah is Surah Al Kahf. Ten eyes in the beginning, ten eyes in the end. Then whatever Bhagir is entering our hearts, whatever Bhagir Dabat is doing on our outside, Allah will make everything to save it completely. So as I've been talking about your brothers, that bringing the firm yakin upon Allah, and Allah's Nabi has shown us protection too. You do this, you will be protected. So we have to turn to him for protection. We know the media has got such a big evil person that they make the wrong, the right, and right the wrong. What did Adam and Islam come? What was Shaitan? Shaitan promised him that this food will keep you in hell for Jannah. And propaganda kept on doing it, kept on doing it. It didn't accept on Adam and Islam. Although Adam and Islam is free for any sort of son, he was still in Jannah at that particular time. Allah has meant to send you in the dunya, but it shows that the propaganda, propaganda you lust to, will affect you. So stay away from the propaganda. Don't read these things. Spend the time in the secret of Allah. Spend the time in Dulu Sharif. Spend the time in Ayatul Kursi. Spend the time in Surah Al Kaf. And then inshallah Allah will protect us. And remember every time we take the name of Allah Ta'ala, our Imam will increase. And you see these things, this will create doubts in our Iman. And the doubts will have created that it comes in Hadith also. That sometimes you will then just see what's wrong and you get entangled in that. Nabi Alaihissalam talks of the fitness. And there's one incident too. We know Mirza Ghulam al Qadiani, he claimed no word. They have been in Cape Town, there are people also now, now they've been promoted again. They were ruled as Kafir from the time of Rasulullah, of course. But in Pakistan in 1974, because they have started in Pakistan, and I've heard many Pakistani brothers are influenced by them. They believe Mirza Ghulam al Qadiani was a Nabi, and some say he was Mujahid, but they believe he was a Nabi. Because a person who claims no word, you say Mujahid, they also is a prophet. And unanimous. The man, Mirza Ghulam al Qadi, was the agent of the British too. And he was so converted to the British, they actually brought him up. When the jihad was taking place to get the British out of India, then Mirza al Qadi gave the fatwa at that particular time to disobey Queen Elizabeth, is that disobeying Allah. How Allah does the earth shake you disobey Allah, Allah was the earth will say you if you disobey Mirza Quran Makai, you are going to obey the British government. Then it is part of the spirit there, but many things of Kufar is there. So there was one person, his name was Hakim Nuruddin. The Hakim Nuruddin said, I'm going to see what he's saying and I'll debate with him. All of my warning why you don't go near the Fitna people. He went there instead of warning him, he became he brought him on and he became his Khalifa. So there is like that, and the Bhakti Muslim have anything to do with them whatsoever. People come to our doors, Christianity, take them away. You don't have to listen to what they say. That is not good akhlaq. That is you putting your iman at stake. It must not happen that because of the Bhakti, that particular time, it has an effect on your heart and it affects your iman. One second, it can affect your iman. Then your team must be there. But, but my sharing is correct. You have to give him down. Then you will bring iman and then turn him away from the door. And particularly in our poor areas, these people go more. So Allah grant us tawfeeq, my dear brothers, to stay away from every sort of fitna. And then to ask Allah Ta'ala, Allah protect our Iman, protect our Iman. When you send our children to school, you don't know what what thoughts they come back. How shukuk and doubts are being paid into their mind. What what they are saying, what what they are learning in school. We be very, very careful. Rather keep our son in what dying in terms of the dunya, if the Iman is at stake. Because they can have all the knowledge in the world, but if the Iman is gone, the whole Akhar is destroyed. And they can have nothing in this world, bread, butter, and jam they have to eat, but they live with Iman, inshallah, they have success here too. Allah gives them sukun, and there is everlasting success of the after. So Allah protect our Iman, my brothers. Allah maintain our Iman, and Allah grants to feet. Close our eyes on Iman, and the things around us, stay away from them, don't come near them. That's what Allah does say. That don't come near shaitan and shaitan in any way. It must not happen, it affects you. You can't put this at stake. It's not something that you can do or you can take a chance on. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Salamun ala ibadihi ladina stafa. Salamun ala al-mursaleen.